the levels of this lake keep on rising each and every day. You see? So where are the people who used to school here? Where are the people who used to come here? Where are the villagers? in Marigat, some 250 kilometers from the Kenyan capital city. All I can see is a canopy of trees. This canopy of trees is majorly made up of a tree species locally called Madenge. This is Lake Baringo, one of the few freshwater lakes found in the Kenyan Rift Valley. It is massive, but it has been expanding in the last four years. A good number of people who live along the seashore have been displaced. So we are headed there, the southern part of the lake, to see the impact of those displacements. That is Kokwe Island, one of the famous islands that are found in Lake Baringo. It has been impacted by the rising waters. I've been told that the island has been split into two by the water. So creating two islands out of the Kokwe Island. So it means some families here have been separated. So people were living here before. They were here before. So water level come up and then they go away. They go to the other sides. They live here. I think you can see the school. Uh, it, is, it has already submerged. We have a uh, cattle live there, which is inside the, inside the lake. You can see. Also, we have um, we have an uh, an dispensary down there also, and people settlement here is there. So you can see because it has a very long time. The houses has been pushed by the waves and then they, they have collapsed. Hey, how are you? Is that, is that your home? I am here too. Looks like uh, it's surrounded by water from our drone shots. I am here too. I am here too. I am here too. I am here too. So where is your family? Today I am here too. 
sasa tukaenda tukahamia huko juu sasa ndio maana yake mimi nilikuwa nimekuja tu kuangalia vitu kama iko sawa and we know we are nomads we use we use we depend on uh, livestock we depend on um, shambas so our all shambas are inside the lake uh, past where our cattle were supposed so to be so shambas you mean farms farms yeah so uh, past where our animals are, are used to to feed on it's not, it's inside the lake as you see so we don't have another place for them to go we were to pass here but un unfortunately there's a fence here so i don't think we can move this it's that bad very bad the boat cannot so the the boat cannot go beyond here unless we find another alternative we can go back so th this was not part of the lake it was not part of it this is the uh, main line so we are stuck you are saying we have to go back yeah. Uh -huh. So when you were last year, it wasn't like this. It was just an open island. It was just a, a people's gardens. Uh -huh. and if here they were, they were testing watermelon here. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Like four months ago. Now it's it's gone. Now it's, it's, it's now inside the lake. So wrong mis miscalculation, then it you get stuck. Don't say ma. Okay, change the vibe. I will come. Eh, ah, that is the engine. Uh huh. So, up I owe the Luaki did. Up I owe the Masham as I said, did you look for cheap? Oh, I On the wall you can see A, B, C, D. It's clear this was a classroom here, but now submerged. It's been like this for now almost two years, I'm told. People used to live around here. This was their school. It's gone. And the waters, from the look of things, the waters keep on rising. Because a few years ago, there were only, or this building here was submerged to a certain level. Today, you can see, it's almost gone completely. The levels of this lake keep on rising each and every day. You see, timbers are now going. The timber there shows that the roofings are going. There are several classrooms here and almost all the classrooms are now submerged. So where are the people who used to school here? Where are the people who used to come here? Where are the villagers?
as the water encroaches, new dangers emerge. Hippos and crocodiles now roam freely in the submerged areas, creating danger to the community. You know, the hippos, they find where grass is. When we are here now, there's a lot of hippos here because they have enough food. So sometimes they come, but the crocodiles are so many. So many, we have them there. We have seen around the boats there. So uh, crocodiles are so many. Is there danger that hippos and uh, crocodiles are coming close to the people? Yes, although we have not got any, uh, any injured person or uh, incident like that, but they are, they are animals, so they are very dangerous. Coming close to the people? Come, yeah, yeah. And do people fear? Yeah, people are fear because they are, they are, they are, there is animal. You know, so many people, are, because I think those people are very close to the hippos and crocodiles, fishermen only. But other people, they fear because they say it is an animal, so we can't go close to the animals. But fishermen, they, they, they can get, when they come to go fishing, they, they, get, they usually get hippos, but they go far. They, they know how to evade them. Uh, yeah, they, they will not go close, but they know the, react, the reaction of the, the hippo. Mm -hmm. They can see this is, this is wild, this is not wild, so you can't go close, so you should have to go far. So but now coming to the community where people have no such skills. Yeah, yeah no, no. The, you can't, the, the people are very fearing because they don't know how I'm full of day. We've been having issues and cases where children are bitten by uh, crocodiles or even women fetching water um, from the lake because it's still a freshwater lake. So communities still use uh, water for domestic purposes. Yes, yes. Um, Some even uh, I saw the shower. In the, yes, in the yes, lake. yes. Yeah. Including uh, school children, yes. we've lost a number of them. Um, I remember Katuit Primary, um, Kapsoi Primary, and the rest. Because ch uh, children are still, you know, asking to go fetch water down the lake. Mm. Um, we also have crop damage from from the hippos uh, because you know our communities are doing some perennial irrigation. Uh, along the shorelines. Yes. So the lake used to be anyway far, but now it is much closer. You see, there were many hotels just on the shores of Lake Baringo. Today, they are submerged. Well, this buildings here represents what was a once vibrant, busy, and brilliant hotel facility. It catered for the needs of tourists who visited Lake Baringo. Today, the buildings, their windows, when you look at the walls, they are shattered after submerging in the waters of Lake Baringo. Well, the business of this hotel is no more. This is bad. It's really bad. Look at it. This is displacement on a massive scale. This is very sad on the business side of things. Look at it. This one here was once a very busy place, I'm told. Maybe over 60 beds is, is gone. And we also have Tumbili and the rest of the hotels. So the Elias are trying to cope up and uh, trying to do uh, camps or trying to raise uh, or, or move away from the lake. Yeah. But I want to um, assure you that uh, if, if, if the lake continues rising, then uh, the tourism industry will be hit completely. The hotels we are depending on, they are already submerged. So we don't have enough clients now because most of the clients, they are come. They, they go boat trade and then they go to the those, those nearest hotel. So since the water level come up, the, the hotels are submerged. So the clients are not there. 
we just get weekend weekend clients so you, you, i can get weekly i can get uh, uh, clients once or two times and and before before we were getting throughout because there, there is a place where they can come and have a, uh, they can come and sit uh, enjoy themselves they go boat ride but now we don't have enough hotels so you guys now are fighting for the few ones boats i think you have seen the more, most of the boats we have more than 40 boats there but the clans are not there so all, when even, even one car when it's come to the beach kill everybody want to to take it because we have a limit uh, we have a limited uh, number of the clients it's that bad yeah